All right. Hello again, everybody. Welcome to another exciting episode of uh, The Kingdom of the Kale Isles. You may have noticed that my intro lacked a certain something that you can't quite place. Um, I'm still recovering from surgery, um, and that whole growl thing vibrates my sinuses, which are what they cut on. So it's remarkably painful. And one of the cool things you may see tonight, not on purpose, is you may see me just kind of get into the role playing and do something I'm not supposed to do and then just go, ow, um, that was really stupid. Yeah, I saw wow. that in your last uh, Turning of Dragons episode. Yeah, yeah, I did something dumb and then I went, I'm not doing that again. So, oh. um, yes, this is the Kingdom of the Kale Isles. It's my custom D&D campaign. I am in a seriously large amount of pain, um, so uh, I may be slightly less expressive than I normally am, but um, yeah, these guys are cool, and we're going to go play uh, to kind of bring you up to speed. Um, they escaped from an arena. After mm -hmm. looking for some allies, they did find someone that Fade believes to be very, very important to him personally. Um, they haven't picked out curtains or anything like that, but it's in the future. Um, and uh, they now have been uh, kind of following Fade's lead as he's leading them further into uh, Kale Isle, the largest of the uh king the largest island in the kingdom um they wandered through this mushroom forest uh met some pretty nasty denizens there uh pissed off uh some night hags mm -hmm. uh and almost uh were taken out by them which by the way i was looking through volo's guide after i mentioned i mentioned to the players the uh the Hag Coven spells, their higher level spells really were not all that useful <laughs> against you guys specifically because so many of you are wisdom based and they're all wisdom based saves. They have a whole section on alternate coven spell lists. One of which had like finger of death uh, or something like that. And I'm like, damn, I could have had a lot of fun with that. Um, no. No, 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 no. So these guys, uh, uh, due to fade xenophobia, to be perfectly blunt, due to fade xenophobia, uh, they uh, figured out these were hags and got into a fight, killed them off, destroyed their little mushroom house, or it got destroyed. I can't remember exactly why. And then I, they... I, I emo raged like Kylo Ren. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, they made it to the other side of the forest and now they're, um, they're at a place that, um, to Fade's recollection, no Eladrin has set foot in, in hundreds of years. Uh, you are at the, uh, base of a ring of mountains, um, and you see kind of a path that goes into these mountains, um, uh, ahead of you, you guys are basically decided to make camp at the edge of uh, the natural forest um, that you found after you got out of the mushroom forest. And um, yeah, so you guys have woken up. You have the uh, the effects of a long rest. Um, I believe that removes all the lovely exhaustion you guys felt. Yep. And it makes. <laughs> Damn uh. night hags. Jody, um, a couple mm -hmm. episodes ago, my max HP got reduced by five because I got some weird handprint on my chest. That's still there, I'm assuming. Uh, no, you killed the night hags. Oh, I thought they... the night hags disappeared. Uh, oh yeah. Well, uh, let me put it this way: um, where they are now, they can no longer affect you. So awesome. that would, so that that would go away. It. Okay. They, they they have a very specific ability that 
Um, if, uh, if you guys had, had kept sleeping and things like that and they had kept doing it, um, probably they even, have died. yeah, they, uh, they, they, uh, they have this thing about corrupting people. Mm. So, yeah, and Fade, nice. Fade was Fade was the the big dumb one. So they're like, <laughs> we'll try him first. Wait, Fade, or, not Fade. I'm sorry, Avok <laughs> was the big dumb one. Real nice. I'm technically not that dumb, but you know, and and someone well, compared to the cleric the and the druid, yeah, I can who see are wisdom they're based it. spellcasters. Okay, true. The barbarian is the big dumb one. Yeah. So anyway, um, you guys have woken up, um, Fade. Um, you now don't have to focus. Um, like normally, you would have to kind of sit down. You'd have to pray, and you'd kind of get like a ping that would pull you in a direction. Um, since waking up this morning, um, and technically when you made camp last night. Uh, there's no longer a ping. There is there is just this kind of energy point that you can feel. It's somewhere in the mountains. You can't tell specifically well uh, where, but it's this constant pulling sensation. Sure, I'm fate will just uh, assume via his vision that he had um, that kind of like zoomed out world mm -hmm. map and then came down and I saw something in the mountains. I'm just going to assume that's where we're going. So it fits, from this point forward, you know, I'll, I'll head that way. From your memory and, and kind of, you know, you're, you're at a very different angle from, from your memory. Fair enough. So it's kind of weird to interpose the two, but it kind of fits. Um, so, as you guys are breaking camp, is there any preparations you make? Uh, from where you are, you know that um, it's, it's a good couple miles until you get to this kind of crack in the mountain, this pass. Um, and then you can see the opening in the mountains that you're probably going to be traveling up. And it looks like that there's a slope there and you're, you're going to be actually gaining altitude. Uh, but beyond that, from where you are, you can't actually see the path more than maybe, you know, a thousand feet in. So, because it twists and turns and things like that. So, um, knowing that there are mountains in your future, do you guys have any specific uh, preparations that you want to make before you start going off? I think that... I mean, we haven't really seen anything. We we did we lost track of those uh, displacer beasts that we were supposedly tracking, right? Yeah. Um, I don't think you guys ever technically tracked the displacer beasts. You found some displacer beast tracks, but yeah. your holy symbol pulled you in a different direction, gotcha, and you gotcha, didn't gotcha. see because you yeah, found so you found we those tracks in the forest them. before you got to the mushroom wood. Um, okay. And when you got to the mushroom wood, tracking anything in the mushroom wood was weird. The The ground was covered in fungus. Footprints didn't really show up um, as much as you could see where fungus had been squished and things like that. So, And since none of you guys are rangers with a favored terrain of mushroom pizza, um, <laughs> tracking in the mushroom wood was just something. It was... It was very much an alien landscape to you all. Okay. So. Yeah. You may yeah. you may have slept on a displacer beast. You don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hmm. yeah, um, at this at this point, I don't think any of you have ever actually seen a displacer beast. Yeah. And the conversation with the hags didn't go long enough for them to really describe them well. Yeah. So. True. You just know that it looks like they have multiple legs, um, or, and um, it's hard to hit them. Yeah, 
they have this thing that makes them shimmer, makes them mm-hmm. appear like they're in two places at once. Mm. Okay. I look at the druid. Yes. We're outdoors. Lead the way. Mm. Let's go in that direction. Okay. I perception normal. Sure. Okay, perception. Oh, wow. Really? We're going to go with that. Uh, 11. So, when you were really, really young, you lived in the Platinum City. It was in the lower city, um, Mm -hmm. but you grew up uh, in, uh, or or no, you you lived in a city. I don't think you lived in the Platinum City. I have to look up your backstory again. But anyways, um, so you you grew up in an urban environment, and then you went from urban environment to the jungle that they found you. Mm -hmm. Um, You've never seen a mountain before. Okay. (laughs) So you're a little bit taken aback by just kind of the majesty of it, uh, the fact that a lot of these mountains you can't see the tops of because there's clouds and things like that. Um, Okay. So... Beyond that, you see a large open field. Uh, you see, uh, you you don't see anything grazing or anything in this field, which is slightly bizarre. Um, but you know, it's it's a massive field. So, cool. Can we assume it's going to be cold? Um, you don't know. Depends on how high you get. Hmm. Uh, would Avok be familiar with mountainous terrain, or did he spend most of his time like in like foresty areas? Like... Uh, so uh, the Eladrins avoid this particular mountain range like the plague, and none of the other islands in the Kingdom of the Kale Isles have mountains. Um, the only, uh, the only other mountainous terrain that exists in the Kale Isles, uh, is, um, Draconis. Draconis and the mountain range that surrounds it. And you, you've never been anywhere near Draconis. So, so we got three people who don't know jack shit about mountains. That's what I was like. You probably, uh, as part of your training, you probably, um, were put in conditions that would simulate um, combat in Dracon- uh, in Draconis, um, simply because there was always a possibility that the Dragonborn could rebel. And since you guys were expendable, you would probably be the first thing they throw at them. Mm-hmm. If That's... for nothing else, then for them to waste all their good spells on you. <laughs> Yeah, that was always okay. the thing. You were cannon fodder, you know? I mean, we can't oh, sugarcoat. Uh, yeah, I'm... Trust me, I am fully aware of... Avok fully knows what his life was back then. Uh, so, yeah, none of you guys have, have really ever been in mountains before. Mm-hmm. Um, Fade is the most familiar with altitude from living in the Platinum City. Um, because again, the upper city is literally the upper city. It mm. floats, you know, a hundred feet above the lower mm. city. Mm. Um, and depending on some of the taller buildings up there, uh, can get pretty high. So it's a gated community. It's pretty nice. Yeah. They got that thing where, you know, if you get up there, you have to let you push the button. And then if you don't push the right button, you don't even get a go away. It's just <laughs> nothing. Hmm. All right. Uh, I think uh, Avok is... I'm getting just images of doors going, here the hill does I swear. <laughs> push the button again. Maybe they'll let us in. Okay. <laughs> We're here to fix the plumbing. <laughs> <laughs> Dama Ladrin and your toilets. <laughs> um. So, do you guys have any special prep work that you want to make? 
Uh, I think Avok is, well, he is going to survive also. Given that this is unfamiliar. Oh, well, yeah, I should have rolled survival. <laughs> well, you're the one that went perception. God damn. I think I just, I think Avok just wants to look at the ground and see if there are any, like, tracks that he should be wary sure. of in this area. So, Go for well. it. 14. Uh, you do see three sets of tracks. Uh, one of them, uh, relatively deep, bipedal, um, looks to be wearing uh, like a boot of some sort. Um, okay. Another one, slightly less deep, wider set, um, still wearing, again, a, a boot, though no quite as heavy. And then the third one, very, very light. Um, I don't, Kata, do you wear shoes? I'm not, I've never actually uh, asked. Um, yeah, maybe some uh, skins around her uh, feet, but other than that, not really. So the third one looked like very, very light, almost barefoot human tracks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Beyond that, uh, the field itself is all grass and stuff like that, so actually finding any tracks or anything. Um, isn't uh, uh, is it impossible? Um, but it was not. It's just simply not uh, something that you were ever trained to do. So okay. So pretty much as far as I'm aware, we're the only ones who've made tracks in this area. I mean, yep. All right. Again, looking looking around, um, the 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 mountains themselves, the forest come up to about. All the forest that you guys see, and you can see the forest continues on for miles. It all stops about two-ish, one and a half-ish miles from the mountain, and then it's just grassland plains. And as far as you guys can see, there are no deer, there are no bunnies, there is nothing in that one and a half to two mile gap between the mountains and the forest. Can I make a perception check to confirm that? Sure. Thank you. Yeah, that, I believe that entirely. I rolled an eight, so. Yeah. Again, you've never seen mountains either, so. There, right. it's, it's really impressive. These are, you know, this isn't, you know, think of, um, I don't know if you guys have ever seen the Rockies, but you know, they're they are impressive to look at. <sighs> okay, um, so yeah, Avok just looks at the ground, looks around. Uh, okay, well, seems safe from here on, as far as I can tell. Everything's better than back in that damn uh, gross forest. I agree. Then a giant spherical object appears before you yeah. with one Dirty. unblinking eye. No. Dirty. Um. So yeah, you guys pack up camp. You're thinking maybe an hour, hour and a half if you take it slow mm-hmm. to reach the base of the mountain. And then, you know... You have no idea what to expect from there on in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, let's just go. I say we just we huff it. I don't right. think we want to go slowly. We might want to hustle because we're going to be out in the open, like big time. Yeah. And there's probably a reason there's no wildlife. So let's just mm-hmm. find that reason or avoid it as quickly as possible. Mm-hmm. All right. So, uh, exact. Um, uh, the question I have for you: Exactly, how fast are you traveling? The two miles. You're going to leisurely pace. You're going to push yourself. You're going to go full run. Two miles. You guys are all in, in relatively decent shape. Two miles is not an extremely long distance to run. Avok, especially, you have probably ran two miles and then fought a battle. <laughs> so. I could do it, but this armor is really heavy. True. So. I think I'll guidance myself, but I'm going to look at the other two and say we should we should we should hustle okay Okay. Uh, just try to keep up 
I'll try. All right. Um, I need constitution saves from Ura, buddy. Okay. Okay. Hmm. It looks like, okay. 17. All right. 19. <laughs> Who would have thought Avok did well? That would be a six. Oh, God. <laughs> so, Avok, really? you're, you're, like, you're setting the pace. You're out in front. You've got a good, long stride. Good body mechanics. You're doing great. Kata, <laughs> um, this is the first time since being with these guys that you've gotten a chance to really like just open up and run. Um, which is something that you used to do all the time with uh, Mama. And so uh, this feels very liberating, you know, just running. Uh, Fade, um, you are not really the athletic type. Well, what it is is I'm waiting for Scar. I make, I yeah, try to play yeah. off like I'm waiting for him to keep up. <laughs> That's right. He's still with the, the, the guy that doesn't have to breathe. Yeah. I'm pretending yeah. like I'm waiting for him. So you guys... <laughs> Watch as as the rest of you guys are just, you know, boom, boom. You're able to cover the distance about half an hour. Um, Fade takes about 45 minutes to do it. And you see him going, <gasps> come on, Scar. It's, uh, man, if I just, you know, if it wasn't the fact that he's so useful in battle, <sighs> I totally just get rid of him because he's slowing us down his face is bright red (laughs) there is sweat pouring out you can see on his armor there are these huge sweat stains on his tavern they're tabard you can almost see through my armor because remember our our buddy one eye made it and it looks horrible oh yeah (laughs) your first attempt at finding a blacksmith (sighs) boy Hold on, give me a second, guys. Um, I try, I try to keep up next time. Uh, you guys are now at the base of uh, a mountain path that you see kind of snakes up. Um, you do notice the mountain path itself is overgrown with shrubbery and. Um, uh, uh, it looks like uh, there's been a couple rock slides and things like that that have kind of changed the overall path. But there is a distinct pathway going up, not following the slope of the mountains exactly. It is going slightly upward, um, but it doesn't look like uh, this path is going to take you over the mountains. It looks like it's going to take you into the mountains. Okay. So what do you want to do? What time of day is it? Uh, at this point, it's er, early morning. Like, you guys woke up, you know, let's say you woke up at 8. Uh, it is now 9. Because okay. Fade took a 15-minute breather mm-hmm. to make sure that... that um, Scar's got to keep Scar's up. okay. You know, you don't, want, you don't want that exhaustion creeping up on those undead creatures. <laughs> um... I said we press on. If there's ever a good point where we want to stop for a meal, I will <clears throat> bring that up that I'd like to do that. I'd like to ritual cast something if we get an opportunity, but not right now. Okay. I, before we I, I go out the path, uh, I'm going to cast Pass Without a Trace. Okay. Nice. Now, uh, like I said, the path itself is overgrown. There are some obvious rock slides that have happened um, that have changed kind of the course of this path. Um, So I will need a marching order as far as who is going to lead the party. There really isn't um, as much as fade. You can feel the direction you need to go. You guys no longer really need to follow fade simply because there's only one way to go. Um but whomever's in the front is is going to be, you know, finding the safest route around, you know, the various optical uh, obstacles, things like that. So, uh, marching order. Who's first? I, uh, I think I have the uh, highest pass of uh, survival, right? What is it? Right. 
It's AI plus eight. Oh yeah, yeah, you definitely do. <laughs> yeah, so I guess it's uh, me in front. All right, I'll take up the rear. Right. That's a great idea, so I don't fall backwards. <laughs> Because that won't hurt at all, having a large Eladrin in in poorly made, I think it's scale mail, just falling mm -hmm. on you. It'll just bounce off. Yeah. <laughs> I can just see Avok as you start, uh, and Avok just stops and steps back. Just like thud. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so I need a survival check from Kata. Okay. Now, again, because you have never seen mountains before, I am going to give yeah. you disadvantage on this. Okay. Then I will give her guidance because that's what clerics do. Okay. Fade says a quick prayer <laughs> before you guys get going. Um, one of the things uh, you're starting to notice, Fade, is um, since becoming a Chosen, um, when you've cast spells... <laughs> you have felt this very strong connection to the Dark Lady. Um, and it's not there anymore. You're still casting the spells. You're still feeling the divine energy flow through you. But you're not feeling that connection um, almost at all anymore. I don't think I would have said this up to the party. I don't know if we talked about it, if anyone else was there, but... My last encounter with her, she she was more or less hinting that, that this was going to happen. She's not more or less available at this time. So I'm unsurprised. So your spells, spells still work, but they don't feel right. Right on. Okay. Uh, 15. 15. Okay. So uh, for the first about uh, two or three hours, uh, you guys are going. Um, Kata, you do spot some areas where rock slides have made the terrain itself very treacherous, and you avoid them as much as you can. Mm -hmm. However, you eventually come to a ravine. The ravine itself um, looks to have been created by a very large rock slide just ripping away part of the trail as it went down. Um, and, um, the ravine's about 20 feet across, um, and, um, looking around, you don't see even the remnants of a bridge or anything like that. So since the last time this path has been traversed, you get the idea that this ravine is new. Um, as you look down it is almost sheer uh, straight down about 200 feet. Yikes. Mm. What do you guys want to do? You said it's about 20 feet wide? Uh, at the narrowest. Again, it's not like a just like a straight, you know, rectangle. Sure. Um, at the narrowest point... It's roughly about 20, 25 feet wide. Um, however, at that point, the uh, ground itself is, is kind of extending over the ravine. So you're not 100% sure how stable those points are. It gets as wide as about 50 feet in certain sections. So, so I want to turn around and look down this path. Where is the nearest tree? Uh, you actually like don't see, you have not seen a tree since you've been uh, in here. You uh, see shrubs um, and vines and things like that. Um, but as far as like actual trees, you haven't seen one. Okay. I look at Avok. Can you jump that? Uh, uh, it's well out of my reach. <laughs> Kata, any thoughts? Uh, I, I uh, could transform and uh, carry her across. Interesting thought. What type of animal would you like to be? Uh, isn't that the question Joey's supposed to ask? Sure, sorry. 
I don't think it would be outside of the the realm of thought for Fade to go. What are you going to be? Because again, well, he is a large Eladrin in heavy metal armor. Yeah, that's true. I've um, seen you become a dinosaur, so yeah, I mean, as well as an eagle. So I, I don't. Yeah, know. I was going to go giant eagle. Okay. And you do so get again because that's it's, it's a form that you're familiar with. Uh, mm-hmm. You do get the idea that with Avok being a very strong, basically solid muscle human, uh, and then Fade being a little less muscle, but then metal, mm-hmm. um, uh, carrying them uh, is going to take a little bit of effort uh, in your giant eagle form, even but it's one, very doable. Even one at a time? Uh, yeah, you would not be able to do two at a time. They would, yeah, they would just obviously. be far too. So oh there, there will be a check involved. It will not be yeah. insta easy, but I pull out a holy symbol and give you a blessing. Okay, Fade, you're just sitting here like every like five feet. You're going, yeah. please don't let us die. Please don't yeah. let us die. And then just randomly touching people. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. This is the one obstacle I'm okay with. <laughs> like even if it goes poorly, I'll be okay. <laughs> Good. The running is not so much. Yeah. So yeah, turn to a giant right. eagle, and then what? All right. Uh, so I just need uh, strength athletics checks okay. uh, twice, once for okay. each of them, okay. and just let me know who you're carrying over first. Okay, I'm going to be carrying over. Uh, Avok first. Okay. So you guys watch as Kata's form starts to kind of flatten itself out. Her her arms start to extend. Her fingers start to extend. Feathers start to uh, replace uh, her skin and hair. And she starts to grow. And eventually you see this giant eagle sitting before you. It flies up into the air, comes back and grasps Avok by the shoulders and starts ferrying him across this fairly large ravine. Okay. What do you got? Uh oh. That's not good. And That's default. always what you want to hear when you're crossing a 200 foot drop. <laughs> yeah, that is. Grand total of eight? Did you add the D4 from the blessing? Yes. Excellent. So, Avok, uh, as you start to go airborne, um, you uh, feel the exhilaration of flying. um, And uh, then you feel this sharp pain in your shoulder as you see red marks appearing as her claws are slipping and you are slowly falling out of her grip. Uh, I have uh, not... Grabbing those talons. <laughs> Hold on. I haven't yet done bad things to you yet. Oh my not. god. Hold, please. Um, you should have a talon attack, right, uh, Kata? Uh, yeah. Yes, I do. Can you roll damage for your talon attack for me? Okay. <laughs> I... Uh, 11 points of slashing uh, so Avok you take 11 points of slashing damage um, mm. as you start to fall and I would like you to make a dexterity acrobatics check to see if you can catch her um, you uh, she starts dropping you basically um about 10 nice. feet into this ravine um, or over uh, the ravine. So you are kind of far away from any sort of wall or anything. Mm. I rolled a 20. 20. I mean, okay. unna- unnatural, but yeah. So as you feel it slip, uh, you see bits of the flesh of your shoulder uh, uh and blood dripping from the talons of the bird uh, as she starts to kind of swoop and, and try and come back for you. You immediately sit there, grab up, 
Um, I would like uh, a dexterity acrobatics check from you, Kata, to see okay. if you can remain flying when this creature grapples you. Okay. <laughs> uh, 22? Uh, so you, um, you guys, uh, both have an experience. Um, you drop 20 feet straight down. Um, but Kata, you're able to kind of catch yourself. Avok, you get a really solid grip (laughs) and she's able to climb back up, deposit you on the other side and just kind of land and catch your breath for a second. Um, Fade, you watch all of this. I chuckle. Was uh, was riding the eagle out of the question? Yeah. I'm asking to show you this because I feel um, like I've ridden her before. Uh, she's carried you. I don't think I've ever had you guys because she's technically a large creature, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think I've ever had you guys physically riding her simply because... Uh, uh, Ava read her pretty much the second time she transformed. Did he? Oh, well. I'm saying from a mechanical standpoint, riding an eagle without... Riding any animal without a saddle is difficult. Riding yeah. a flying one where you'd be... <laughs> Bless you. I assume she was picking you up. I'm sorry. Um, okay. is how I, I wasn't I more saw. specific. <laughs> um, right. Simply because what you would be grabbing onto, uh, because the wings like attach right at the back, you would be grabbing yeah. on to the thing that keeps her flying. Um, yeah. And so yeah. it would create a lot of issues. Yeah, okay. Okay, that's fair. All right. Um... Or you'd be like strangling her with your arms yeah. around her neck. Also true. Mm. So, okay. one down, three, uh, two to go. Okay, before you go pick him up, let's just for safety's sake. Uh, Avok takes out his fifty feet of hemp and rope and tosses uh, some length over to Fade and tie this around your waist so we don't lose you. Uh, make me a uh, dex- just pure dexterity check. Okay. Her no strength. Sorry, strength. Uh, even better, nineteen. Okay, so you have to hurl this rope, which really doesn't have a whole lot of weight to it, uh, to the other side of this ravine. Um, which makes it lands on the ground near Fade. Fade, there's a rope in front of you. I tied her own scar and wait for Katja to come back and tie him to her talons. Oh, crap, I forgot about the damn white. Oh, God. <sighs> the white yeah. is, is remarkably light. Scar doesn't have any armor or anything, so... Yeah, I, yeah, I should be able to carry him across just it's, fine. It's the issue of, you know, Avok being, like, solid muscle and fade, wearing heavy armor. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he hands the rope to Avok once he's over and has hopefully Avok can throw it back. <sighs> yeah. Another strength check. That's a 14. The rope falls into the ravine. You're holding on to the other end. Uh, so yes. you feel it just go taut as it dangles on the side of the ravine. Oh, we're fishing now. You notice it doesn't go far enough down the ravine to uh, uh prevent someone from dying if they fell from the end of it. It's a deep ravine. Okay, pulling up the rope, and I heard that little mocking gesture from Fade. Do you want me to be safe about this, or should we just... Do you want to jump it, Fade? Oh, hell no. I'm only going to worry about it if I fall. (laughs) I'm just having a good time waiting. (laughs) So, uh, can I try again with the tossing of the rope? The biggest issue is is the rope really doesn't have any weight to it. Mm. So, 
you know, getting it to go, throwing it 5, 10 feet, not an issue. Throwing it 25, 30 feet in a straight line um, with wind resistance and stuff like that, it's just, it's difficult. So that's all it is. Uh, are there any, like, um, decent-sized rocks nearby that I could? Yeah, maybe... All right, I'd like to There's take a... tons of rocks. Thank you. I'd like to take, like, a fist-sized rock, uh, tie the tie one end of the rope around it, and use it as a bit of a weight to help me. That's... Okay. Oh. You have no issues throwing it over. If you want to, you can hit fade. You can try to hit fade. Oh, actually, I want to not. Um, I want to. Uh, yes, you do. Don't lie. Jody, can if you, you make a pers- sleight of hand check? You can make it look like you did it on accident. Uh-huh. I will actually do that. Yes, okay. I will. <laughs> make me a sleight of hand check, and then I need an attack roll with disadvantage. Forget it. I just freaking failed on that. Yeah, I can't. Okay, I still need the attack roll with uh, disadvantage. It Let's just means it. it's going to be obvious that you're aiming for him. Yeah, I'm going to make an intelligence check to figure out what the heck just happened. Uh, that's a 16. Uh, Fade, what's your armor class? I wouldn't have my shield up, so 16. 16. So as you're sitting there, you start swinging the rock and you you sit there and you look at it and you just get this glint in your eye and you hurl it with intensity and fade you see the rock getting bigger and you're trying to figure out why in the world the rock is getting bigger and bigger and then it hits you um and you take a point of bludgeoning damage as he just smacks you in the head and then he makes this this big deal of oops that was totally a mistake that I did on on accident and wasn't aiming for your face. It's okay. We'll do Zone of Truth later and find out the real answer. <laughs> do it or kick your ass. All right, I tie up to Kata when she gets back. Okay. okay. Kata, go ahead and make me uh, a uh, strength athletics check. In your I email. definitely say a prayer for this one. <laughs> Say a little prayer for you. Don't <laughs> sing. That's... Singing is bad. Yay. No, singing is normally good, but singing vibrates my sinuses. Yeah. Uh, 23. Uh, you don't have uh, much of an issue at all. Um, the, the rope kind of being tied around uh, your uh, talons itself kind of gives you little extra confidence uh, boost, and you carry him over without too much difficulty whatsoever. So I untie myself, and I carried the rock over with me. I left it on the end of the rope, and okay. uh, after I untie myself and... It's baseball-sized. I throw the rock over my shoulder into the ravine. You guys sit there, wait for a second. I, I started walking. <laughs> As soon as it went over, I started walking away. Oh, it was an accident. Sorry. I didn't care about the rock. As that happens, you guys hear another. And then another. Yes. Avalanche. And you guys start feeling the ground itself start to rumble. And you guys start hearing this this loud cacophonous sound as you look up and see these boulders the size of giants falling down the hill, carving an even wider ravine and looking like they're going to fill the area that you guys are in. I would like everyone to roll for initiative for me if you would be so kind. Fuck. Oh, wonderful. I've got that damn song stuck in my head now. Should I be using the uh, eagle stacks? 
Uh, for initiative, yes. When you're transformed, okay. you use your mental, their physical. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. Evac. Uh, 18. Fade. 12. Kata. Eight. All right. First things first, rocks start falling all around you since you guys are not in a position uh, of good cover and haven't had really had uh, any chance to do anything to protect yourselves from this onslaught of rocks just falling down. Uh, I would like dexterity saving throws from everybody, please. Okay. Natural 20. All right. Natural 20. Damn. 18. You guys are very good. You are going to take half damage from this. Okay. Uh, half of 15 is 7. Okay. okay. You take 7 bludgeoning damage as these rocks start uh, pelting you and, and doing things like that. Avak, uh, you are up first. You can see... Um, that the uh, path ahead of you is very soon no longer going to be traversable by these rocks. Do you have a specific thing uh, that you would like uh, to do other than running forward, seeing as you have a ravine at your back? Uh, frick. Okay. Uh... Uh, the, yeah, I, it's pretty much running forward. Again, okay. I'm pretty much booking it. <laughs> Not a problem at all. So as you, uh, um, as you are running, um, you see a very large boulder um, come crashing down, um, uh, going to be occupying the same place that you are going to be occupying in just a couple of seconds. I would like a dexterity acrobat or a uh, dexterity saving throw, please. Mm-hmm. That's an 11. 11, all right. This is going to hurt. Ouch. Oh, if only we had lunch. Uh, you take 11 bludgeoning damage as this rock uh, hits you uh, and also uh, crushes your ankle. Um, you can still run, um, but... Uh, uh, it's very, very sore, so going forward, uh, any dexterity saving throws that you made will be made at disadvantage until something can be done to fix it. Um, fade! So you are up next. Have, it's a good thing my danger sense gives me an advantage, so it's just straight dex saves. Fade, you are up next. Do you, uh, do you have anything specific you want to do this turn other than just straight up running? You've just watched Fade go and get pummeled by rocks. One of them lands on his ankle and you hear him yell out in pain. Yeah, I don't know. I guess I will just run forward and if it looks at the last moment like I'm going to get hit, I will banish myself. You will banish yourself. That is interesting. Um, so as, uh, as you are going, the ground beneath you starts to shift and shake and the ground drops uh, very suddenly. Um, and as you see it happening, you instinctively feel the will to just jump so that you can get onto solid ground. I would like a strength saving throw from you, please. All right. Strength saving throw. 13. 13. Okay. So you, uh, you do jump. And you grab onto the nearest part, uh, piece of solid ground. Uh, however, um, you do not fully make it on. You are kind of like clamoring, trying to, to, to climb up it. Um, so the next time the rocks fall on you, you will have disadvantage on that saving throw um, due to the fact that you are technically prone at the moment. 
Um, which is right now. I need Ura, buddy, to make me uh, uh, dexterity saving throws, please. Mm. 21. 16. 18. You guys are rolling super duper well. When it counts. Yeah. And that was with disadvantage for Fade and just normal for Abok? Correct. Yep. Uh, seven more bludgeoning damages. More of these rocks come tumbling down. You guys are, are running forward. Kata, uh, you're seeing your group um, get further ahead of you. You're still in eagle form, but the rocks themselves are filling the air, and they're kind of bouncing over you. So while um, you are still capable of flight, um, mm. you do not see a path above this rock slide from where you are. What would you like to do? Uh, is is Fade like guy uh, struggling to uh, hang on or? Uh, he's on solid ground. He's just prone right now, and he just got kind of he rolled out of the way as another big rock uh, kind of clipped him in the shoulder. Uh, let me see what I can do. I. Uh, uh, is there a way I could possibly uh, help him uh, get to his feet? Uh, sure, if you want to. Um, because of all the rocks and things uh, falling through the air, you're going to have to kind of like dodge and dive through them. So okay. I am going to need a dexterity acrobatics check from you. Okay. All right. Oh, that's not good. I uh, seven. Seven, okay. I'm take going to be above ten. the ground while I do this. You take ten bludgeoning damage as you fly forward. Uh, you're you're diving between rocks that are bouncing twenty and thirty feet into the air as they run into each other and crush each other and break apart. Uh, and one larger one smacks you right between the shoulder blades, sending you plummeting down. But you catch yourself right at the last instant. You are able to make it to fade. Fade. You feel um, these talons dig into your armor just slightly and lift you upwards. Um, putting you on your feet as she kind of flies by and continues going forward. Um, after she yeah. does that, more rocks come tumbling down, and I need everybody to make dexterity saving throws. Okay. Fifteen. Sixteen. Seventeen. You guys are still rolling pretty good. So do we want to be moving up or to the side? What do you guys think? Uh, I think to the side. You really only have one direction that you can go, which is forward. Because on either side of this ravine, it's it's kind of like a V ravine. And so the rocks are falling from one side and filling up the other side. And this uh, both sides are far too steep for you guys to be able to climb and to... Um, they're they're made up of broken rock bits and things like that. So the likelihood of starting another rock slide from the other direction is equally as likely as you climbing up to the other side to avoid the rocks. So you all take five bludgeoning damage as more of these rocks pelt you guys. You do see um, uh, in the distance you can see where the rock slide itself uh, is is kind of ending um, where it's it's no longer affecting this path and you can see kind of uh, everybody make perception checks for me okay uh, with I disadvantage, no longer please. Any... with disadvantage mm -hmm. I'm no longer an eagle by the way okay so you guys watch as kata changes back into a normal form uh, 21. Okay. 23. So, um, Avok, you are focused on rocks. Rocks seem to be a very good thing to be focused on right now. Rocks are trying to kill you. Yeah. So, that's all you care about. Uh, Fade and Kata, rocks are important. Rocks are trying to kill you. Um, but as you guys look forward, 
you see kind of a strange sight. You see grass, which you haven't seen since you've been in here. You see trees, um, which again, you haven't seen since you've been in here. Uh, and you see kind of a glow. You can't really explain it it's not a color that you're familiar with but there's just this kind of glow coming from ahead of you um so we're gonna go back up to the top of the order and the top of the order is rocks oh god dexterity saving throws please okay uh god this might be my first fail 12 okay 17 what was it 17. Okay. Eight. Uh, Kata and Fade, you will take full damage from this. Yep. Avok, you are, even even with a sprained ankle, you are dancing around rocks. Yeah, fight through the pain. Yeah, totally. Walk it off, man. Uh, so, uh, Fade and Kata, you guys take 10 points of damage. Avok, you take 5 points of damage as you continue to run um, Avok, you are first up. Um, after what happened before, is there any specific thing that you'd like to do other than just barreling forward, hoping that you don't get hit by another rock? Like trying to maybe predict where the next rock is going to fall or, you know, coming up with, you know, something that you might be able to hide behind during the next rock uh, when the rocks start attacking again basically as they you know think of this uh, you know think of this as a chase scene um but uh you know in all good movie chase scenes it's not just people running away from something there's obstacles you know sometimes they'll slide underneath something and and a rock will slam into it or you know, other times they'll climb up on something else and they'll just barely miss the poison darts that were going to hit them. You know, think of this in a more cinematic sense. You're running forward. Rocks are, are just crashing all around you, though. The sound itself has made communication near impossible. What do you want to do with your turn? OK, I think I'm going to actually try and predict where the next rock is next that's where I'm going to start following up. I am going to have, um, uh, I'm going to actually have you uh, describe to me how you're going to predict where, like, what's, what is Avox's thought process on? Okay, where do I think is the safest path? Are you looking at other rocks and just kind of judging trajectories? Are you going off of pure intuition? How How is Avox doing this? Hmm. Uh, I don't think I'd be able to predict predict trajectory. Predict trajectory. Trajectory. Thank you. Predict that. I think he's going to be able, based off of intuition, pretty much just go with his gut feeling, okay. and he's going to go rage and just to because his ankle hurts and it's really made him mad. Okay, so you guys hear. Um, even over the sound of this cacophony of rocks and boulders slamming around you, crashing into each other, this howl of rage. Um, unfortunately, as you start raging, um, it affects your ability to think clearly. Um, so what I would like you to do is make me a wisdom check um, with disadvantage, please. Ten. All right, so sitting there and just kind of barreling forward, you're having a hard time kind of focusing. Um, you're not going to get any benefit on your next check simply because uh, your intuition didn't cut, uh, didn't uh, pan out this particular time. Uh, then we're going to go to Fade. Fade, rocks are crushing around you. You've just heard Avok just yell at this scream of pure unbridled rage and just barrel forward. I will, uh, after that last hit, I think I'm knocked to my knee. I will then kind of, uh, just push myself forward staying as low as I can. And at the last moment before I see the next drop, I will misty step, uh, 
to make my turn 60 feet worth of movement. Okay. Um, make me a spell attack roll. And then after I do that, I will use my action to dash for some more. 26 for Misty Step. All right, so as you sit there, as you're running forward, you see a rock coming directly for you, and you kind of look around, and you see an area that seems to be relatively untouched. And as you feel the rock start to impact your armor, you fade from existence and appear. I think it's 30 feet, right? Yep. 30 feet in front of you. Um, the next rock attack, you do not have to make a roll, um, which is very lucky because the next rock attack is now. Uh-huh. Uh, so, Avok and Kata, I need dexterity saving throws. There's more rocks are just pulting and, and falling from every which way. <sighs> Nine. Okay. Eight. So you guys are both going to take full damage. Well, Avok's still going to take half damage because it's bludgeoning damage, but that's because he's a crazy barbarian. Yep. yep. You could have taken half of a half of damage, though. Uh, so that is 15 bludgeoning damage as okay. more of these rocks pelt you guys. Okay. So... Seven um, or eight. Uh, round down. Seven. Gotcha. Uh, Kata, it is your turn. You've just had more rocks kind of pelting into you. You've changed from your giant eagle form, reverted back into your normal, frail human form, and you're really starting to feel this. The ground beneath you keeps shifting and shaking. Um, uh, what do you want to do this mm. uh, turn? Uh, I think I want to transform again and I... I don't know, maybe... Uh, run towards that that well, area that we saw, maybe? First, uh, first things first, what are you going to transform into? My uh, saber-toothed tiger. Okay, cool. So you guys watch as Kata, you know, is running and running and then falls onto all fours and just starts going forward even faster and faster. And then what specifically are you doing now that you are a big kitty? I, I'm going to uh, run, run towards the area. Oh God! That, I really hope I don't screw myself over. That fade, uh, fade kind of jump too, or? Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, make me uh. Yeah, we'll go dexterity acrobatics check as you try and dodge rocks and things like that because you, you saw where he went. You've got a good picture in your mind where it is. You just have to find a path that gets you there. <sighs> Ten. Ten, okay. Not quite good enough uh, as you are going. Uh, you take nine bludgeoning damages, more rocks kind of. Uh, hit you and you're not quite able to get to a spot uh, of safety. Uh, it is rock turn. Uh, Ura, buddy, make me dexterity saving throws, please. Okay. Right, for once, it's decent. 17. Okay. 20. Okay. 12. Alright, so Fade, you will be the only one that takes full damage from this. Yay. How are you doing? I'll be fine. Uh, so fade 11 damage, 5 damage for the rest of you guys as more of these rocks uh, are uh, falling. Does uh, my rage have that 5 damage as well? Yes, so that would bring it down to 2. Trixie Barbarians. <laughs> um, you guys can see... Uh, now all of you can see this kind of glade in sight. Um, uh, but you've still got one more uh, round, and at the top of the order is a bunch of rocks. Um, so one more dexterity, uh, one more dexterity uh, saving throw for me, guys. 
Oh, yeah. I've been uh, forgetting about Scar. We'll have him. Uh, we'll just have him make like three or four in a row. Okay. At the I'm end gonna take... here to see if, if you still have him. Or if you if you need to, you know, find pieces of him. <laughs> um, so we are going to start uh, Dexterity Saves. What do we got? One. Okay. 17. 17, 16. okay. So Kata's the only one taking full damage from this. So okay. Kata, you take 12 damage. Everyone else takes 6 damage as more of these rocks are just falling and, and uh, uh, bouncing around you guys, breaking into smaller and smaller pieces. As you look back, there is no longer a path behind you. Um, it has just completely been destroyed by this rock slide. Um, Avok, you can see roughly what's your speed? I don't know, whatever it is. Within uh, within running distance, there is um, what looks like safety, the end of this. Um, but there's still tons of rocks and things like that. Um, is there a creative way that you would like to get there? <sighs> You have other things. Again, think, you know, big cinematic movie. Think of other things you have. You have a massive axe with you. You have, you know, your barbaric strength. You have rope. You have a rock. Well, you had a rock. You threw it at Fade. Mm. You know, okay. Think creatively. Think outside of the box. Yeah, it's just I don't think that's what Avok would do is think outside the box in this case. It's just I have he has rocks coming at him and it's pretty okay. much I mean Hit the rock. <laughs> pretty much I, mean, I guess from from a you know, from a rage perspective, you have something that's hurting you. Attacking it would not be out of the question. <laughs> okay, so I, I. All right, I guess I move forward, but I guess there will probably be one big rock coming right at me, so I will take my great axe and just slice through it. Okay. Make me an attack roll. Okay. Uh, that is a 26. 400,000. So you guys watch as Avok just still raging is running and dodging. You have little bits of rock just kind of bouncing off of your very thick hide and you see this big rock coming right at you and you're almost in safety and you just let out this ear piercing roar as you take your axe off your back and you just swing it with all your might and the rock itself cleaves into shattering next to you and you run to the safety on the next rock slide attack you will not have to roll okay fade you watch as avok takes out uh anger issues which you think could probably be better dealt with on a therapist couch out on a rock <laughs> Um, however rocks are still falling around you but ahead of you you see this glade um, that you feel the pull now um, has gotten to the point where your holy symbol is physically moving towards it okay so, so it's that obvious that glade is where you're being pulled towards however so will... there are tons of rocks and things like that in your way yeah I think I would have had to kind of jump out of the way of the shattering from Avox Rock. So okay. I'm like, kind of like already moving, and then my holy symbol slash shield will be kind of just like in one motion, I'm going to just take it and brace myself for the next rock and, okay. wait, and wait to see if I can like help shield Kata from the next one. Uh, so you're going to try and get both you and Kata kind yep. of protected. Okay, cool. Um... Take, if that means me not uh, moving inspiration. forward, that's fine. Uh, okay. Go ahead and take uh, an inspiration for that, because that's kind of cool. Um, I need a constitution saving throw. See if you can just 
withstand these large rocks smacking into your mystical shield. Thirteen, not so much. Uh, it's not bad. Um, because you're kind of superimposing yourself um, between Kata, it is going to help Kata um, during the next um, uh, rock slide. Um, okay. However, it does mean that the next rock slide you are going to have to make a roll still because you are kind of holding yourself back. Sure. Um, uh, but you do take no damage as you are kind of deflecting rocks and things right now. Um, it is rock turn. Uh, rocks come, Kata and Fade. Go ahead uh, and uh, you can make your rolls with advantage this time. Okay. Because there is a magical shield in front of you. Um, 18 for me. Okay. Um, uh, 50. Uh, both of those are good. Half damage from this. Oof. Uh, so that is six bludgeoning damage as, uh, now fade if you would like. You have a special property of your shield where you can absorb damage because you are shielding both Kata and yourself. If you would like, you could absorb all 12 damage between the two of you into your shield. Yeah, let's do that. All right. So as you guys are, are, are running, you see this giant boulder come crashing down. You dive out of the way, but it looks like it's just about to slam onto you. you and uh, Kata, right as you are, are afraid it's going to hit you, you feel this arm kind of wrap around your waist and pull you up. And you see the shield come, and it pulses with energy. And you watch as the rock itself, as opposed to bouncing off the shield, um, if you've seen uh, Captain America where they shoot his vibranium shield and the bullets mm-hmm. just drop to the ground, same basic thing. The rock just boom, drops to the ground. Mm-hmm. Cool. Uh, Kata, you can see ahead of you um, mm-hmm. safety. Fade has protected you but kind of rooted himself uh, to keep you guys from being hurt. What do you want to do in your saber tooth cat form? I try to run ahead. Okay. Uh, just make me straight up acrobatics check then. Okay. Oh, so I'm bad. 19. Okay. Uh, without his protection, because you kind of run ahead of him, uh, you do get pelted by some of the smaller rocks, uh, but you only take half damage from this, so you take three more damage as you run through and make it to uh, the safety of this glade. You see that Fade is the only one uh, left there with uh, Scar just trailing behind him ever so slightly. Um, Avok, you, um, you have nothing to do, um, and neither does Kata, but Fade, I would like uh, one more uh, deck save with advantage, please. All right. One natural 20. <laughs> you actually avoid the rocks completely with a natural 20. Cool. Um, again, then... you can see, um, now that we've gotten to this point, can you make me three uh, deck saves with disadvantage for uh, Scar? Sure. If it looked like the first one, whatever. Second one, I'll decide. But the, if like the last one's going to hit him, I'll do that vanish that I've been ready to do on him so he can avoid a rock and then poof him right back. Okay. So the first one with disadvantage is a 16. Uh, okay. Uh, how many hit points does he have? 45. Oh, so, yeah, I don't really feel bad about this then. <laughs> Uh, what is that? Eight? Eight yep. bludgeoning damage. Okay. Second one, he fails. Okay, he will take full damage four. from this. Eleven bludgeoning damage. All right. You see him as he's he's moving forward. His, his feet are shifting and he's getting hit by these rocks and he's just moving forward with purpose. All right. Uh, and one more the, roll. The third one will be an eleven. And just, just so you know, that disadvantage, 
canceled out two natural 20s for Scar avoiding these fucking rocks. <laughs> Sorry. He's not... Uh, being undead is not the greatest thing for dodging rocks, apparently. Yep. I almost put in 40 20. Yeah, that that been been, very mean. Yeah, that uh, he takes 12 more damage as these rocks pelt him. He is now next to you. You can both see the end. Um, All right, let's go. Let's go. Uh, however, he is moving very, very slowly. So you have the choice. Um, if you run forward, you can get to safety. And he will probably get to safety as uh, well. But he will have one more. Um, role that he has to make otherwise the above him as we run okay then you are both going to make one more check all right so him uh, he can do it regularly you can do it with advantage all right then he will get 15 okay and i will get 21 all right so both of you take half damage i will absorb his into the shield so six you uh um unfortunately in this particular case it's an all or nothing kind of thing so so it would be a grand total of technically 12 since it halves it to six that your shield would need to absorb that's fine okay so again just like before big rock comes hits the shield all momentum stops and it just drops and you guys make it into this glade as you guys are there, you see more of these rocks and everything just falling and and collapsing upon itself, and you realize that you, if you do leave this place, you are not leaving it by that direction. Um, the path that used to be there does not exist anymore. Are the rocks still falling? Uh, they are. Um, it seems as if this rock slide um, started... Uh, at the top of one of the mountains and just picked up more and more rocks. So we're talking about a rock slide that started, you know, six, seven hundred feet up and just picked up more and more rocks and pieces of mountain and things like that as it came down. So I look, I look at my party. We, we were just attacked. I hope you, hope you guys realize that. Something's watching us. That's not how a rock slides work. Uh, okay, then, well, we better be on our guard then. I will, out of character, what are your hit point totals so that we can heal up? Because I think we're going to face some more shit real quick. I would be... In character, I'm just going to look over you guys and see if you need healing. I'm at 68, but I can just take a short rest and work with that. 23 in uh, tiger form and 57 in human form. Okay, so we're probably okay. All right, let's... Uh, if this looks like a safer, safe enough spot, it's weird that we're here and we found this, but... So... You look around, and again, this area, for, uh, the first thing, um, Fade, you notice it first, the rest of you guys, probably milliseconds afterwards, this area is infused with magic. It seeps into every, uh, every corner of this glade. The glade itself... Uh, looks to be uh, roughly about a thousand feet in diameter. It's a very large glade. And as you guys look around, you can see flowers and trees and all of this beautiful nature that seems to have overtaken um, some city or settlement of some sort. You can see pillars that are covered in moss and are broken up by the roots of trees. You can see archways um, that are fallen and, and broken in disrepair and, and various tables. You can see tables that are carved um, out of pure stone, um, worn uh, and, and 
mixed into rubble with their benches tipped over and things like that and and you guys are in the ruins of some ancient forgotten something it's completely unlike anything any of you guys have ever seen Fade, you know, growing up around the Eladrin, you know Eladrin architecture and stuff like that. You, this is, and you also, um, you also would have learned um, a few things about some of the lesser races, um, having to work alongside them being a cleric. Um, this is not dwarven made. This is not Eladrin made or wood elven made. Um, this in, this architecture is completely alien to you. Cool. Um, Avok, I would actually like you to roll me a history check. Huh. That's cocked. Thirteen. Uh, you don't know why. You don't know how but you recognize the shapes here. You don't understand? It's not like, oh, I'm home, or oh, I know this place. Uh, but something about this feels very familiar to you. Like you've been not here physically before, but... Um, Kind of if you've ever if you've ever been on a long trip and when you get close to your home, that feeling of the towns, you know, feeling the same and things like that. Mm -hmm. Just get this this kind of familiarity with these ruins. But you know beyond a shadow of a doubt you have never you've never seen anything like this before. And so you have this very strange, ambivalent type of feeling where it's it feels familiar, but you know you've never been in anything remotely similar to this place. Okay. Fade. I don't know what... Oh, go ahead. Okay, I... I don't know what it is, but... Something about this just, I don't know, I have a funny feeling. Fade, your holy symbol is moving away from you. You have to physically hold on to it. It is, it is actively moving in a direction, um, not to the direct center of this ruin, um, probably about 100 feet to the west. It is moving in that direction and very strongly pulling you towards it. So I have a question. Is the pull, like if I were to let go of the shield, would it be going on its own? Uh, you think so. Not like super fast. Sure. Like you could keep, you could, it wouldn't even be a brisk walk. You could walk next to it as it goes in that general direction. Okay. Then I, I hey guys, and I just kind of like hold the strap just with like two fingers. We got to go this way. I want them to see that it's like moving on its own. <sighs> so as you guys walk at a leisurely pace towards wherever this is leading to you, it starts getting lower and lower and lower and then it disappears into the underbrush and you hear a tink and it's kind of glowing so you can kind of tell roughly where it is but the area that it has fallen into is completely overgrown with this tall grass and and weeds and other things like that this entire area it seems like nature has just ravished it mm. What what is specifically in this area? You said that there's overgrown grass and stuff, but is are there any of these pillars or anything around here? Um in the specific area that you are in right now, you see the remains of a wall um about 
you know, five feet away from where you are. Uh, you do see the remains of an arcway and another wall um, about 15 feet further down. You think that this might have been a building um, at one point um, that has just been eroded over time. Um, and this yeah. would have been an entrance to this building that you guys are, are near. So I'm going to pick up my shield slash holy symbol and move five feet away to that wall. Mm -hmm. Does it let me move it? Um, as you pick it up, you notice uh, it uh, is not... Uh, the only thing you pick up. Uh-oh. Um, as you lift it, you see this uh, shard of metal. You would almost think it obsidian with how dark the metal was, but instead of being pure black and glass-like, uh, it is dark blue almost indigo and it is it's stuck to your holy symbol as of right now the piece itself is uh, roughly about God, I have to think um, this particular piece is roughly about six inches long it has jagged edges um, um, and it's, uh, thin, uh, roughly about, um, uh, an inch and a half wide. Um, one edge is obviously sharpened, um, as if it were a blade of some kind. Um, the top, and, and that's one of the longer edges, the top and the bottom are broken, so they're jagged. And then uh, the back uh, seems to uh, be broken as well, um, but is thicker. Um, and so the edges aren't quite as jagged. Okay. That's exciting. I will... Uh... Boy, for, for lack of anything better to do right now... I'm going to try to find a place inside my armor that I can, like, tuck this away and keep it, like, as close to me as possible. I'm not going to be, like, sneaky about it, but this is my priority is to get this safe. So as you, as you lift it up more, the grass itself rustles a little bit. I look down for more pieces. Make me an investigation check. Oh, God. I will guidance myself because it matters. You have no idea. Fuck off. I'm using my inspiration. Go for it. Yeah. 23. So, um... I rolled a natural one before that inspiration. You get, um, you get the idea that probably the best thing for you to do at this point is to remove the grass because there's something in there. And so you start ripping away handfuls and things like that. Um, Avok, you start seeing, you see Fade pull away what to you is obviously the shard of some sort of blade um, mm. that you've never seen its like before. Um, and Katsu, you see the same thing. And then you <laughs> see him get down on his knees and start just ripping away grass and things like that. What do you All guys right. do? Uh, can I uh, try to uh, help him my... Remove the grass uh, in the uh, area they used to get in. Sure. How would you like to do that? I'm a saber tooth tiger. I can probably do. Oh, so you're still. Oh, you're still in tiger form. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you're you're uh, starting uh, to do that. Uh, roll me a deck save, please. Oh God. Yeah. Uh, sixteen. Okay, so as you're sitting there going through, you feel a sharp pain in one of your paws, and as you pull it out, another piece of this dark indigo metal is now embedded in your paw. 
Uh, and you take two points of uh, slashing damage. Um, okay. And uh, your paw itself hurts immensely. Like, you've you've stepped on thorns and things like this. This hurts more than anything that has ever been stuck in your paw before in your life. Um, while that is happening, Avok, are you doing anything? <sighs> Um, I walk up and see the two shards. Um, uh, uh, okay. So this is what you've led us to is a couple of broken pieces of metal. This is what we've been left to, yes. Led to, yes. This is it. I start panting and drooling as I'm digging up the grass. Good grief. Okay, well, uh, let's just speed this up and be on our way, because whatever. All right, I help dig as well. Okay. Um, so as you guys do this, uh, it takes a little bit of time. You take the, the thing out of Kata's paw, uh, but you guys eventually come apart uh, with about 13 pieces um, of uh, metal and uh, what looks like uh, a fairly intact hilt Mm-mm. of uh, a rapier. Interesting. You notice the rapier itself has an extremely elaborate uh, guard. Uh, you could you could almost consider it a bell guard, except for the fact that it's not uh, solid. Um, but it would wrap around the user's hand, um, protecting it almost entirely. Um, and interwoven in the metal itself is the symbol of the Dark Lady. Oh. <laughs> So, after after these pieces are uncovered, and I, I, so I waste some time, like, I'm chill-touching the grass as we go with necrotic energy just to make sure there's nothing hidden within it. Mm-hmm. Like I'm decaying the stuff as we go, and once I'm sure that all the pieces that we can find here have been found, I will... You guys go to a, a bench that's not completely destroyed... And um, uh, kind of just kind of lay out the pieces and, and get it. And uh, you uh, get uh, uh, about 38 roughly inch long blade with the hilt adding on to a complete length of about 46 and a half inches. Um, so a decent sized rapier. Um, you can see where the brakes formed and everything. Um, and it looks like you've got all the pieces there. Okay. Um, but again, you've never seen a metal like this. Um, the metal itself is cold to the touch. Um, and again, it is this deep indigo color. Not that the blade itself has been treated to be like dyed or anything. The actual metal itself is blue. A dark, dark indigo blue, almost black. And you've never seen anything like it before in your life. Well, just for safety reasons, I'm not trying to make this thing whole. I'm going to assemble the pieces where they should be. Mm -hmm. You said a bunch of these pieces are about six inches or so? Yeah, they range in size. The bigger pieces uh, are about six inches. Some of the smaller pieces are three or one inch. Um, You, um, Avok, you have seen weapons get broken before. You have never seen a weapon shatter like this. Like this is not, this is not how swords work. 
<laughs> um, they don't like if if uh, you know, if a rapier um, because a rapier is generally a flexible blade, it's generally going to bend before it breaks. And if it does break, it breaks once. It doesn't shatter into a hundred. You know, you are. It doesn't shatter into thirteen pieces. Like this, this doesn't happen to a sword. <sighs> And looking at the the quality of the metal, it's not that the metal itself was brittle or anything. Uh, the edges are still razor sharp, like the non broken parts of it. The edges have not dulled. You have no idea how long they've been there, but they are still razor sharp. So I took my cloak off and laid it on the bench. So these are like cradled, not mm -hmm. touching the stone. <laughs> and I will go to the hilt. Actually, I'll go to the tip. Mm -hmm. And if this thing looks complete, I'm going to take the two pieces that look like they go together mm -hmm. and focus all my energy and start praying and cast mending piece mm -hmm. by piece to assemble it as one thing. Now, I understand mechanically it can't fix it, but I want this thing like whole so I don't lose any pieces. Okay. Uh, make me a spell attack roll. Well, on attack rolls, 19. Okay. So, as you sit there, focusing on your mending spell, fusing it into this, um, something feels wrong. It's kind of like you're casting cure wounds on a rock. Okay. I just wanted to try it. I will... As delicately as I've ever done anything, I'm going to wrap these things up in, in my cloak and get that stowed. Okay. Um, taking pretty precise care, you fold and roll things together uh, in your cloak. Um, by double and triple folding it, you get a pretty good idea that despite the fact that the pieces are very, very sharp, you don't think um, unless you like jostle them around a lot you don't think they're going to cut through your cloak and, and fall out or anything like that they seem pretty safe you okay. can put them into your pack or where, wherever you want to store them with relative uh, um, safety sure alright so I do that you now notice your holy symbol drops to the ground. Again? Yep. I pick it up. It's no longer glowing. It's no longer pulling you anywhere. So I, I look at the other two and I say, from what I gather, these are the pieces to... I don't want to, I don't want to say the word champion. These are the pieces to a tool that, that I need to make for for the Dark Lady. She, she clearly brought us here. I mean, you saw for yourselves. But I think this is all she needed me to do. I'm very sorry for making you guys suffer this trip up here, but this is worth my life. So I had to do it. Uh, Avok, make me another uh, history check with advantage, please. Okay. Alright. That's 17. Um, it's really starting to bug you how familiar this place looks. You, you don't... It doesn't make sense. But you, this just seems familiar and as fate is kind of explaining this you're having a hard time listening to him because you you have never really had a home per se you know ordinier was where your garrison was located but you were there you were off pillaging as often as you were there um you remember very little of your childhood, 
um, and it wasn't a pleasant one. You've never really had a home, and so this feeling of nostalgia is very alien to you. And so you keep looking around, and you keep trying to figure out what the hell it is that is going on here that feels so familiar. And on one of the archways, you notice a word. Um, what languages do you speak? Common and orc. This uh, word is in orcish. It's an old version of Orcish, so it's kind of like us reading Shakespeare, where the spelling is a little bit off and it looks weird, um, but you recognize it. Uh, uh, the, the word itself roughly would translate uh, to departure or leaving, something like that. <laughs> Hey. Wait a minute. It's been a long time since I've seen some work writing. You do know in uh, the Kingdom of the Kale Isles, uh, orcs, um, orcs are purposefully not taught uh, to read or write orc, orcish. Um, the only reason you do is when you were very, very young and we're still under the care uh, of uh, your mother and, uh, and living with your half-brother. Um, you guys found some ancient orcish books by accident and kind of taught yourself the language. <laughs> but again, you were self-taught when you were like one and a half two years old um, basically matching sounds that other orcs were making when they looked at these books to the sounds in there and then as you got older they uh, they were permitted to speak orcish and so you kind of reverse engineered well you know what each one of the little symbols what the sounds mean and now you know the language and you kind of reverse engineered it into the ability to read orcish so you're probably one of, to your knowledge, you are one of, uh, you are the only person alive that can actually read Orcish. Awesome. Um, do I see any other Orcish writing about? Uh, uh make me uh, a perception check with advantage. Gotcha. Eighteen. Um, so, recognizing that word, you look around and you start finding more orcish words, and you start to realize the real the reason this feels familiar to you. These are orcish ruins. Which, the history that you have been given. Orcs didn't build things. Orcs were nomadic tribes that were, you know, beaten into submission and used as breeding stock. They were subhuman. Uh, they didn't have the intelligence to do much beyond build the lean-tos. This is exquisitely crafted orcish ruins. <laughs> huh. Frankly, we may have found where the orcs started like before you guys did your thing to them. While you're, Interesting. While, while you're wandering around, fate has kind of wandered off a little bit. You really don't know where. And at this particular point in time, you don't actually care. Like this, despite the fact that you are human, um... You have a half orc brother. Um, you don't technically have orc blood in you, but you have orc 
blood in your family. You feel a, a strong connection to this. So you're looking around, and you finally make it to the center of there, and you find in pieces this circular, um, somewhat similar to the gateway you guys found in the Dwarven Ruins, um, but instead of being this very large circular gateway with like constellations on it, uh, this one is more oval shaped. Uh, it's slightly smaller, um, only about 10 feet wide at its widest and about 15 feet tall. Um, and it's in pieces on the ground. Um, but kind of, you know, putting two and two together, you think at one point it stood upright. Um, and it's at the, the dead center of these ruins, like the exact 100% center. Um, can I investigate it to see if I can find anything? Nope. Sure. Go ahead and roll me an investigation check. That's good. That's a crit fail. I don't find shit. Give me just a couple seconds. I think at this point, Scar's going to walk up to Kata and ask her if she thinks there's anyone else coming. Can you smell anyone? And do I? Uh, make me a perception check. I think you get advantage. In... Do you have keen senses smell? I... Yeah, yes, I do. So you would get advantage smelling. Yes, I would. Yes, I would. Um, uh, 20 total. Nice. Um, nothing. You smell... You... you uh, the overwhelming scent that you smell is nature. You smell flowers. You smell life. Um, it's very, very relaxing. Um, but that's it. You don't. And you know, you smell fade. You smell avok. Avok could definitely use a bath. Um, <laughs> fade could have used a bath yesterday. Um, uh, but uh, beyond that, like this is, this is probably the most natural and nature-filled place uh, you have ever been in. Like it is infused with nature magic and things like that. Yeah, I shake my head now. After a few minutes, I, I kind of catch up and find Avok looking at this stuff, and that looks kind of familiar, doesn't it? Yeah. It's weird. So, Avok, uh, again, your... Uh... Your understanding of history is before the Eladrin took over the Kale Isles, um, orcs um, lived in these roving barbarian-like bands and tribes and uh, would pillage and rape their way around Kale Isle and, and anywhere else that they appeared. And the Eladrin came in and kind of corralled them up, stopped them from hurting all of these people, um, and uh, and now use them for breeding stock. Um, but this is you 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 can't explain how you know it, 
but this is this is ancient orcish architecture this is there's an art to this you you've been around higher society a few times um you've very quickly been ushered out of the way but you can recognize art there is an art there is an elegance to this um that completely conflicts with your knowledge of history. This place As you're sitting there trying sense. to figure this out, um, Fade eventually joins you again, and you see him kind of shoving something into his uh, his pack, some cloth into his pack as he comes over. I kind of like bend down and look at these oval stones and kind of like stand in the middle of them. And doesn't this remind you of the the portal in that sunken there, city? It's it's basically think of it as like a a large oval with a center cut out. You know, each one of the stones is roughly about you know three inches wide, whereas what you guys saw in the dwarven city was this massive, like. 20 foot in diameter, almost perfect circle um, with constellations and everything. This, it's very smooth. There's no markings or anything that you guys can see on it. Um, mm. uh, it's not, it looks almost blade-like, but it's not sharp. Like it does come to a bit of a, a tip and it's kind of pointed. And again, you know, just from piecing things together, you think when it stood upright, it was probably about 10 feet wide, 15 feet high. And you guys can see like an altar of some sort that would have been where it stood. Uh, Fade, if you would like to roll me a history check. Sure. I was about to say, this sounds eerily familiar to the thing I saw in my overhead vision that showed me like a bunch of elemental warriors or something. You described a portal that looked just like this that we looked at and was able to look through. Uh, 23 on history check. So you remember when you had this vision, you remember seeing this, uh, not really city, um, but kind of temple in this area that looks very similar to the one that you're looking at now, um, except that it, in your vision, it wasn't in ruins. And at the very center of the temple was this shape. Um, but on the inside of the shape, um, you could see through and see another world. And on that world, you saw armies of uh, what looked like living suits of armor with fire uh, bursting forth from them, meeting hordes uh, of elves and humans that looked uh, like no humans you've ever seen before. Some of them with their hair on fire and um, uh, wielding uh, these black iron weapons and clashing in this great war. But you saw it for just a moment. So you really didn't get a good chance to see it. But you get the idea that when this was completed and an active thing uh, it connected to somewhere else I'm actually going to relay that all all of it because I, I know I told Kata about when I first had that first vision because I think it was as soon as we got back to our island with her I had this vision in the middle of the night and I saw everybody getting ready and stuff. So she knows about it for sure, because she was up. Mm. So yeah, I'll relate that whole bit of info. So Fade lets you all know about this vision he had and how he saw this when it was a full temple and that this was some sort of portal to somewhere else. He has no idea where it was, or even if it was um, in the Kale Isle somewhere. Again, they're 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 uh, specifically Draconis. 
no Eladrin has ever set foot on uh, Draconis soil. Um, you have no idea if what you're seeing uh, is Draconis or another island that you've never been to. The further away from Kale Isle that you get, uh, the less Eladrin have been there and the less they know about it because they, uh, they spread out as far as they could. And as they've been getting, as the population has been growing, they've been slowly spreading uh, eastward. But there are still, so like, taking over the archipelago. where you guys found, found Dom Daro, the Eladrin have no presence there. They are, their armada is simply not large enough to be able to control that area. I, I tell Scar to walk around and see if he can find another way down the mountain. Um, so Scar wanders off, uh, have him make uh, a couple investigation checks for me. Oh, Scar, if only you could see things. I got a five and it froze. Eleven. So Scar wanders off. You don't know how long it's going to be till he comes back. Yep. I want to uh, show everybody I found uh, that I found some bones kind of half buried all over the place. And I kind of collect them like I collected the shards and see if I can see what type of person or being this was. Mm. I kind of like play archaeologist. And... There's not really enough, like you weren't able to find enough left to create even a partial skeleton. Um, what you were able to tell, like you found a femur, you recognize a femur. Sure. Um, it's broken. Was there any like distingu distinguishing racial features? Like did I find the skull of an orc or of a dragonborn? You didn't find, uh, you, found pe yeah, you found some teeth that could belong to a number of races. Um, okay. You didn't find a skull itself. You found some pieces of a skull. Um, but it's obvious to you this is not, you know, normal decay of a body. This body was desecrated. Mm. It's sure. like the femur is the most difficult bone in the body to break um, mm. because it's surrounded by muscle. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the skull and the teeth are shattered you know every you did not find a single intact bone anywhere and they were spread over a 20 foot area it looks like purposefully oh that's whatever, gross whatever did this purposefully ripped apart and desecrated this body okay Abok, is you're still like you're really focused on these ruins. You're looking at this, uh, which you're now considering a portal. You're seeing weapon marks. Uh, can I? Look at those weapon marks. Is there any way I can decipher how fresh they are and maybe look at weapons? Ancient. Ancient. Okay. They look like um, blunt type weapons. You can't tell, you know, a mace breaking something and a warhammer breaking something. It's going to leave very similar marks, um, especially when this was done centuries ago. Um, mm -hmm. But it looks to you that this portal gateway uh, was purposefully destroyed. Mm. <laughs> Interesting. So, 
If you guys want, you can you can explore the ruins a little bit more and see what else you can find. Yeah, I think that's what I was going to do. It's really yeah. can't get any more out of the, this. Go ahead and, um, everybody, go ahead and make me um, some investigation checks. Oh my God. I will throw up a detect magic. Okay. You gotta be kidding me. You are blinded, Fade. Sure am. Um, this place is so infused with magic that you actually can't see with your detect magic on. Okay. You do notice that uh, there is arcane magic present here. There is divine magic present here. There is nature magic present here. Um, (laughs) This is, it seems almost as, as if this is like a nexus of magical energy. Um, and there, again, there's so much of it here that you can't see anything else. Okay. I rolled a 14. Okay. So, uh, Avok, you go searching, um, between Kata, uh, and Avok, uh, fade for 10 minutes. You are blind. Mm. Um, sure. um, over the next, uh, couple of hours, uh, Avok and Kata, you guys look around and you start finding other things. Avok, you're starting to pick up orcish weapons that you recognize because despite the fact that these are ancient, um, orcs in general are, a, are, are kind of a, a, a very, I guess, literal group. They make things that work. Um, so... Yes. While there is an elegance to the design that you don't see in modern orc weapons, these are orc weapons. They work. They're designed specifically to do a very specific task, which is to kill things. <laughs> um, so you can tell that they're orcish. Uh, you also find uh, you find remnants of bones and things like that that you can't really identify a whole lot of. Um, however, Kata, as you are looking... Uh, you uh, actually find um, Aladrin made uh, scimitars <gasps> and uh, uh, a long sword. I will um, pick up very the, uh... worn and broken and, and basically to the point where they're useless, <laughs> but they are obviously Aladrin made. Mm, so much teasing. And they're in peace. Like you find, like you find a long sword with half the blade broken off, uh, and the scimitar itself. You know, the handle, the end of the handle is shattered, and the blade itself has all these nicks and cuts and things in it. None of these weapons would be useful for anything, but they are obviously Aladrin made weapons. I like take the. Uh, I'll carry the handle in my mouth and die. Uh, they go back to uh, where we uh, started searching. Uh, because it took you a couple of hours, uh, you would yeah, I should probably de- you would eventually transform back. Okay. So you guys, thus far, you have found uh, Kata has found Aladrin made weapons, a couple different ones. Uh, Avok, you have found some much more elegant, but still obviously orcish weapons. Uh, Fade after your ten minutes of blindness. They were at this for a couple of hours. Go ahead and roll an investigation check. Fifteen. Uh, so looking around, um, you find um, something that surprises you. Um, you find uh, an unstrung bow made of hmm. wood. Now you know how wood works. You know that over the century, wood is biomatter. Biomatter degrades. This was treated in such a way that while you probably would not want to attempt to string it, because you think it would probably break under the stress of being strung again, um, this is obviously a bow. And from having interacted with them... uh, or actually, you haven't really. Um, you know it's not a Ladrin made. I dealt with elves as servants. 
Yes, but you never fought alongside uh, or okay. went went to battle with any of the other elven uh, races. You were again. You were you're the closest to an academic this group has. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. When I see uh, Katja come back, I'm like, that could be worth money to a collector in the in the city. Mm. Not that we can really go find a fence at the moment, but mm. I'm going to look like, so we, we find all this stuff and I'm just going to make an intuitive leap and say that there was some kind of battle fought here. And I'm going to start looking around for high ground. Like where would someone make a last stand kind of thing? I want to go look up there. Make me a, a wisdom check. Fifteen? So, based on your vision and based on the damage and everything, um, it seems like the damage radiates from from the center outward as opposed to from the outside inward Hmm. as if uh, instead of the people trying to protect this temple from an outside invading force um, the people trying to protect the temple were protecting it from a force coming through the portal Good knowledge. Good to have. Okay. So as far as like a high ground or anything, um, they were already, the, the high ground was the portal and it was already taken by the invading force, which the more you look at this and confer with Avok, the more you start to understand that the Eladrin were the ones that invaded or at least that's what you're you're finding here so where's that uh, gold dragon cave at from here uh you guys don't know and currently uh elaine is a little bit uh, overtaken with emotion, and so he's not really uh, he's not really speaking to you guys right now. He's he's a little overwhelmed with with everything. Okay. But Fade, you were taught Aladrin history for years, like you had a couple decades of Aladrin history. This is never mentioned. There was there was never ever any mention of an Eladrin force destroying an orcish temple. You have the same history that Avox being told. Orcs didn't build things. They, they, they weren't smart enough to do that. That's why they're used as breeding stock. They're, they're barely smarter than cows, is what you've been told. Um, and uh, Again, the history that you have been given is that the Eladrin went from the Platinum City outward to civilize the world. Boy, doesn't paint a great picture for me. And that is where we are going to end it. Hmm. So, uh, for those of you watching, thank you for tuning in. Um, I do stream games every Tuesday night, twitch.tv slash Stranger Jody. You can also follow me on Twitter. I try to tweet um, when uh, I am uh, uh, running games. Otherwise, just follow me here on Twitch and you'll get a little notification anytime I go live so you guys can find out exactly what in the hell happened in this <laughs> temple that doesn't exist. Um, yeah. I do upload uh, all the episodes to my YouTube channel. It's youtube.com slash 
Trainer Jody, um, and I have all of the episodes currently up to date on there. So feel free if you want to kind of catch up and see everything else that has happened with this group, just check it out over there. Otherwise, uh, that's all for me today, and I will see you guys next time, all right? Bye-bye.